everybody. Welcome to Photography Schoolhouse. And today we're joined by Allie, Allie Goo, not really her name, just her short name. Yeah. And um, we're going to do Dark and Edgy Boudoir Part 2. So I want to explain a little bit about the lighting and what we're doing here. Um, we're using, in, in Dark Boudoir, because we're in a small space um, with gray walls which means that every light you turn on, light bounces everywhere. So if you want to create a dark background, it's actually pretty difficult given these circumstances. Now you could, of course, get some sort of velvet or black material to hang, and that partially works, although I've had trouble with velvet because there's a sheen on it that's uh, sometimes hard to deal with. But what, so what we're doing is we're just using the lighting and the position of the lights to do two things. Number one, to reduce the bounce of light around the room. And number two, to enhance shape and add a three-dimensional look to the portrait. And we're going to do that. I don't know what camera can see a strip light. We have a camera that shows a strip light. This one, no, that one's close to no, it's okay. Well, you've seen them before in our other productions. We have two strip lights at play, and they're, they're cross-lighting each other. The one on camera left is going to be the stronger one. Let's uh, switch to Allie. So it's her right side of her face is being illuminated by the first soft strip light, and it has a honeycomb grid. And it's coming in acutely from the side. So it's not spilling light onto the backdrop. The other one is a slight fill, turned down as low as we can get it, um, and just filling in some shadows. And the third one is a light as low as we can get it and a uh, neutral density filter doubled over just to cut the light down even more. And the reason for this, the only reason for this is Ali has really dark hair and we want a really dark background. And if we don't add some visual separation, we're in trouble. It's just going to look like she has no top to her head or something. It'll just be a face in space. Not such a great look. So um, we preset the exposure. We've done some testing before we started the broadcast. And I'm going to take a test shot so you can see what we've got going. So you can see everything's pretty much working here. It is very, very dark and that was the plan. So if I look at the histogram, the histogram shows that it's really under, or uh, yeah, underexposed, but I'm not going to worry about that. Um, I'm shooting raw, so if I need to recover any dark areas. Uh, the other thing I can do is just boost my ISO to 400, and we'll see how the dark areas are performing. So actually, I kind of like that. Just a little bit of extra definition. The histogram looks pretty healthy. It's still dark, but that's the plan. And there is, again, um, our television studio, or the studio has a TV showing our images, and it looks very contrasty. It's actually, in real life, not as contrasty as it looks. So we're really trying to use this lighting to accentuate roundness. So there's some girly parts where this works really well. <laughs> and um, so the only thing we have to be careful of, there's only certain models you want to do this kind of lighting with. Because when you have light coming in at such an acute angle, it skims across the skin, and any tiny microscopic dot on their skin, any pore, any acne scars, um, show up like a sore thumb. So when you do this kind of lighting, you've got to prepare yourself. You're going to do a lot more retouching. And um, that just comes with the territory. But we're all good with that. So now, um, she's got a black shawl. Is that a shawl or a coat? It's a coat. OK, a black fur coat. And um, the studio cats are misbehaving. So if you see a cat from time to time, you understand what's going on. Uh, 
we uh, want to make sure that it's not blocking the her light too much because remember it's coming in from her right side a little redness on your throat did you scratch Yeah, it's okay. So let's do a let's just work with this pose. Now, Allie is a professional model, and why I mention that is when models who work all the time, they're used to doing things in front of the camera. They know to move to the next shot. They move. They know all of these things. But in a portrait studio, that's not who we're dealing with. We're not dealing with models most of the time. We're dealing with regular people off the street who come in for a photo session. So the difficulty is they don't know what to do. So the photographer gets a lot more work. They have to instruct them in every way, shape, and form, where to place their hands, how to tilt their head, everything. With a model like Allie, I could probably just click the shutter and let her do her thing and it would all be fine. Uh, but again, that's not really real world. So I always produce you know where those sheets went? They're just buried. I always produce preview shots. Probably can't see these too well, but they're shots that I grab. Uh, actually, in this case, most of them are mine from other shoots. One or two I really liked I saw on the internet. I grab these for inst inspiration. And it's also good during a shoot with an amateur that you can show them the pose that you're going for. They understand it better. If you can demonstrate the pose yourself, I'm not really good at doing that. I don't do girly poses very well. Um, so, Allie's already seen this. She knows what our plan is for this evening. And I do this on every single shoot that I do. I've got a collection of these that I've done over, the, over time. So if I know I'm doing a dark and edgy boudoir, I just pull out those sheets. Uh, if I know I'm doing a high key boudoir, I just pull out those sheets. So, that being said, let's take some pictures. So, I really want a little bit more action. Lean, lean forward a little bit. Bring that arm right up onto your knee. Nice and straight in the back. There we go. Angle your shoulders towards this wall. Yeah. That's okay. Move the coat back. Eyes back to the camera. Drop your chin a touch. Let your head drift this way. Drift, 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 drift. Now, we get into feminine and masculine poses. Uh, her key light is to her right. So, the rule of thumb in feminine poses is turn their back to the key light and then turn their head back into the key light. So let's practice that. You're going to turn so your back is facing that light. A little bit more. Keep going. Okay. And then turn your head back as if you're looking at the light. And of course, no flash. So with this, we really start seeing some accent to the cleavage because um, there's more shadow creating form and roundness. Um, this kind of, you know, if you attended any kind of photography course, you were probably given an apple by your instructor and told to light the apple so it looks like a juicy apple ready to eat, not just a cutout of an apple stuck on a background. Uh, so that's essentially the lighting lesson that we're doing here. We're just adding some shape. Now, I can adjust the fill light. I can make this really contrasty if I want. This is basically season to taste. Uh, if you like the really high contrast look, go ahead and kill the fill light. Uh, in my case for this, I'm kind of happy with where it is. Because, particularly because I don't want to lose too, too much detail in the dark. And sometimes when the lights don't fire properly, you actually get some pretty cool shots. So I want to get more turn. Just come forward on the seat a little bit and more twist of your whole body that way. And can we drape the coat on the other shoulder? Yeah. Will that work? 
Now, what have I done? Which cam? What's the best camera for Ali right now? Okay, well, let's do that one. Um, the beads optional, but the beads can be a prop that yet again shapes the chest. So it can drape like what she's doing now, or it can drape right down in the center of the cleavage. Um, you could take the end of the, I want to call them pearls, they're not, they're cheap plastic things, and play with them. And you're lost in thought. You're in another world right now. Are you cutting to the still shots? There we go. Now the other thing I like to try with something like this is coming in from a high angle without blocking any of the lights. Now, in days of old, I'd be concerned about the one eye being in shadow. Um, I think there's more flexibility today in professional studio portraiture where it's okay for dramatic purposes to, uh, to let that happen. Uh, it's a judgment call, and again, it's seasoned to taste. You might want the eye partially covered, or you might want to brush the hair back, uh, or do some of each so you've got variety. So Dave, did you want to try some of these? Dave's going to bring out the big guns. The digital Hasselblad. It's one image per flashcard. I'm going to try and get out of the way. Okay, I'm going to, no, you can stay there, Dave. I'm going to evolve the pose just from there. So, um, I'm tempted to bring you right to the edge of the seat, facing off towards that wall. And then, um, again, turn your head over your shoulder. And... You can drop your eyes, no eye contact with the camera. Drop your eyes to the floor as if you're contemplating something. Tilt your head so it's not, yeah. So you want me to do these now? And then yeah, then yeah, and then I'll catch up later. Yeah, there's the cat. We knew that was going to happen. That's uh, Bandit, one of the two studio cats. Um, and just, they're still kittens, so uh, they like to participate in every shoot. Well, you wanted her to turn yeah. more over and... Um, and more tilt to the head, right towards me. Tilt, 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 tilt. Chin down. And Dave, you could come from a higher camera angle, too. You could stand for this. Okay, 
Now we don't have a tether for the Hasselblad, so you can't see the previews like when I shoot my cannon. You may have to restart the uh, capture utility. Take a test just to make sure capture is working. Is good. going to take some of that brightness away. This is more like the look I want, very shadowy suggestion of light and shape. Let me check the histogram. Okay, and again. Turn your head more, try and really crank it like that. See, these could go really well. Now, you notice on her chest, just subtle, subtle lighting. Uh, this is a really good kind of a shot where you want to use uh, dodge and burn techniques to uh, to really punch up the image. Yeah. And again, same pose, but I'm coming from up here. Lift your eyes to the camera. Just a little sparkle. Okay, so we're going to evolve this pose into the next one. And it is going to be, I was going to show you, except I can't find it. I want to try this. Um, facing that light, sit up on the edge. Yeah. Now, in this one, for instance, top right hand. Uh, right. okay. That other right, yeah. The other right. <laughs> so she's sitting on a chair, but we're just going to use this arm. So um, you can turn your shoulders, look at it carefully. Okay. Yeah, like that. And then your head back to the fill light behind you. As if. Yeah, let's. We probably need that, yes. A little adjustment to the hair light. Because it's like missing her right now. Will that go up higher? There should be another section to that. No? Oh, sorry. Okay, let's try a test. I remember 
doing with this hand. Yeah. So that hand is just actually in this shot, she's got it tucked right behind her. Right it kind of, no, it doesn't, yeah, just it disappears. You don't even see it. Okay. So not a big bend in the elbow. Let the elbow soften and just tuck the arm behind. Tuck, tuck, tuck behind you. Down low. And then it's really a lean forward at the waist. This is uh, not to the camera, to the light. You're leaning forward like that. And then crank your head back all across your shoulder. There we go. Even more lean. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Yeah, I know it's hard because you don't really have a place to put your legs. Now, what I don't want with this, see how she brought her hand back? Um, is that picky? Yeah. So it becomes a distraction. This br area of brightness is competing for attention with everything else. So that's why in this shot, the hand hidden totally is better. Watch again. Yeah, well, if the flash would just fire. So see how that's so much better in terms of focusing attention. You could even drape that coat right across your right arm. This one? The other right arm. Oh, right across this? So, yeah. so this is covered up. This hand is tucked in behind. Lean forward with a straight back and look back across. Oops, no flash. Let me check it on camera. I'm going to open. There we go. Now, I'm a little disturbed at her eyes being so dark, so we're going to fix that. We're just going to brush the hair back a little bit because all your light is coming from over there. Alrighty. So um, now I'm going to sit you back down, which means we going to re-aim everything probably. But in this uh, middle row, these two where she's got her elbow just leaning up on the uh, shoulder like that. Um, your left hand kind of playing with the beads. The other hand we're going to crop out. It's going to disappear under the coat. And you're going to turn your shoulders a little bit more to the wall. Turn, 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 turn. Shift your whole body. And then the pose, no eye contact, of course. Uh, we don't want the coat to block the light. So yeah, like that. Perfect. So we've got a real area of brightness on her face, which is good. And the light drops off on the cleavage. That's uh, a little better, actually. I'm going to frame this a bit differently. Look away more to that fill light. Yep, yep, yep. Tilt your chin down. Now, I'm sure you've run into this at your own studios, but basically everybody has a propensity to lift their chin up. Half the world is concerned about double chins and the other half is just crazy. Um, so the problem with that is it's not a really great look. So the answer to it, if they did, now Allie doesn't have this problem, but if, a, if they did have a double chin, is instead of them lifting their head up, just pop it out from the shoulders a little bit. I tell them to push their face forward. 
And then, if anything, they can lean forward, lift their head up. So it's actually stretching the neck out um, rather than tilting it up. So lean forward, tilt up till it's level. And that's a great way of reducing any chin issues. So let's go back to that pose. More angle to the shoulders. A little bit more lean. Yeah, like that. Really. Chin down. Down, 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 down. We're going to go like you're glancing down at the floor. Okay. This is actually on the camera. It's looking really good. Very dark, very edgy, very moody. Just the perfect amount of light. And uh, so that's good. So we can, uh, you can continue playing with that, but we're going to go to something totally different. Well, not too totally different. Um, I don't know that that band of beads is long enough. Let's try this. If we were to, if you were to lie on your back with your head resting up here, so your feet are going to go down that way, and not your back, yeah, scooch down, scooch down. Now, the pose could be a, a great leg shot if you look at the bottom left. Yeah. So legs are elevated, a little bit of thigh is showing. She's still all properly covered up. Uh, you separate the knees uh, to different heights so that uh, it doesn't look like she has just one leg. Yeah, I like that. That's good. So. Now, what you need to do is look up at the ceiling, hold the beads in your right hand, and just play with them, wrap them around a finger. We got that knot is right center frame. Okay. Now, you could also do this with a pair of high heels. A lot of ladies like high heels. So I'm just going to angle it in. Maybe arch your back a little bit more so you're not so, yeah, good, good, good. Now, same pose, but let your head drift back to the camera. Yeah, like that. And close your eyes. Oh, of course. Okay. So, David, you want some of these? Yeah, you have to push that light you're up, up against the light. Oh, still?
Okay, you want to want to try the the lights the other way? Okay. I should point out if you're seeing some square bright lights, they're not actually being used in the still photography. They're the video light so that we have enough light to see what we're doing. Remember there's only three lights, two strip lights and um, an accent hair or kicker light. So okay, I think uh, I'd like to try one other thing, one other, uh, we may need Brendan to come and help for a second. We're going to make the love seat go away. And we're going to bring out a wooden stool and we're going to wrap up with that. So give us a few seconds, folks, while we just make a quick set change. Uh, Brendan, um, yeah, let's just grab this love seat and pull it over there. And then, Dave, if you grab the uh, wooden chair or whatever. Yeah. Isn't it great having staff? <laughs> oh, the cats uh, bubble wrap. They enjoy new shipment. <laughs> <laughs> Which way do you want the chair? Um, the the back, or the, facing the window, facing the door. Okay. And it can probably, well, Position the chair when we see the light. It's probably going to go further back, maybe. I don't know where it's going until I see it. Not bad. So, yeah. Scooch the chair towards me a little bit because we're losing this shoulder. That's a little better. Hair light's actually kind of working. It's just maybe a little higher to the top of her head. Try something. Let's kill the hair light and the fill light. The effect I want to go for is this bottom over here where my finger Ooh, is. That's cool. So you're mostly covered up by your coat. Okay. A little bit of this arm shows. You can, yeah, lose the beads. Okay, so bring cover up with the whole coat. Okay. Just a little bit of this arm showing in your face. And let me take a test, see what the light's doing. Okay, turn your head straight to the camera. This time, tilt your chin up. Close your eyes. Now I want to get uh, even more chin up. Touch more. Angle, follow my finger. Close your eyes. I want to bring your coat even covering more. I just want a slim line of an arm now, if this picture, Brendan, if you could bring the uh, capture up on screen right now. Notice how her hand is in the shot. I think it's going to be better if we drop her hand right out of the shot. See the difference. So, again, it's very contrasty on purpose. No fill light whatsoever, no background light, no hair light. 
I'm just trying to illuminate very selective parts of the skin. Um, well, I'm thinking with the code, if you pull it right up. Yeah. Yeah, like that. Chin up. Look at the ceiling. Eyes down. Yeah. Oh. Lost our capture. Okay. Now, turn your head right to the camera. Eyes closed. Chin up. Yeah, I want some light coming down that arm. Okay, this is good. Hmm? Yeah, bring your hand right out from under, but let it drop. It's going to be out of frame. A little more bend in the elbow. It doesn't matter. See, I like the arm out a little bit more because it kind of frames the picture. Turn your head back more to the camera. Chin more up. Very moody. Now I want to try a variation on this theme before I let Dave go at it. And um, lose the coat. Hands down. Drop your chin. Little stern, not stern, but in charge look to the camera. Lean forward. See where the light is falling. Let's push the chair back a little bit. Right there. See, I just opened up the shadows a little bit. Dave, can you turn on the fill light again? Just the fill? Yep, not the hair light. Let's see how that's working. That's good. He's good. So, chin down. Point your nose straight at the camera, but chin down. More, more, more. A little, a little uh, hint of the. My eyebrows going. Oh, it's working. Follow my finger. Freeze. So her dark hair against the dark background. A little bit of separation, but not much, but that's okay. I want to go for this really dark, edgy kind of look. But I want a little bit of light in her eyes. So here's where we're going to have to go with this. Um, or maybe the fill light didn't fire. Yeah, it didn't, so there's more light there, but we're still missing that. So Dave, I've got another job for you. Oh boy, eh? Um, that hair light's going to come out this way. The hair light's going to come beside, like, the camera position. Yeah. You'll be happy to know the studio cat is currently destroying my lighting equipment. And we're going to try and just light her face. So that's fine. It doesn't have to go too, too far back because I want a very narrow spill. Okay, let's start with it there and let's tilt it up to uh, aim at her face. Does that look like it's looking at you? Let's see what it's doing. Being 
Yeah. And I think we're going to tilt it a bit, touch more. I really want it in her eyes. There we go. I want a closer composition. It's also a good time for negative space with a shot like this. Good, good, good. Your coat. Let's try and wrap your shoulders like a stole. Yeah. Right into the camera. Point your face. Keep coming. Yeah, right there. That hair back just a bit off the eye. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, the flash didn't go. And neither did this one. One last time. Eyes to me. Alrighty. So Dave, if you want to grab some of these, this sequence. I will get out of the way. Do we still have audio? My light is red. Alrighty, so dark and edgy boudoir, low key photography. Suppose I should look at the camera. Low key, low key photography in a space like this is actually harder than high key photography. Doing high key is a piece of cake compared to doing this. So um, a little bit harder to set up depending on the space you have and the lighting you have. The important ingredients for this, strip lights, like a softbox, only narrow, reduces the dispersion of light. The strip lights also have honeycomb grids, or I'm sorry, egg crates in them. The egg crates further reduce the dispersion of light. So the light isn't bouncing off all these gray walls and causing us havoc. Um, worth their weight in gold. I use strip lights easily as much as I use soft boxes. 
Um, I, all of my headshots right now are done with three strip lights, and um, they're they're invaluable. If you don't have them, I'd look at uh, getting some for whatever brand of lighting you have. The only other light we used, I don't know, I'll pull this one in. You can see it. This is uh, just a standard mono head with uh, a, a 10 degree honeycomb grid on it, and it's turned down as low as it'll go. And it was still too bright, so it's got a doubled over. This is a neutral density filter. It's been doubled up. So that's how much we're trying to reduce the power of the light. Now, I've said this before. I'll just repeat it again. Uh, many people, when first buying lights, make the same mistake I did, which is I thought I needed the most powerful lights in the world because that just made sense to me at the time. It didn't really have a good reason. Turns out it was a big mistake. Um, my battle in the real world is getting the light low enough, not getting it bright enough. Now, if I was shooting cars or aircraft, that would be a totally different story. But I'm talking about the kind of uh, portraiture and work that you would do in a portrait studio. So with that, we're going to sign off. Um, have a great time, everybody. If you missed part one, go back and grab it. Talk to you later.